What is up everyone, Renfell here, and welcome back to another guide for Dragon's Dogma 2. And today we are diving into the Magic Archer, which is my main character here in the latest game from Capcom. Um, I originally started out as an archer, leveled that character all the way up through the archer vocation. I have a guide for that particular character if you want to check out the max level archer guide. And then of course if you want to check out everything related to, to the magic archer, well that's what this guide is for. And also all the live streams and everything else. So make sure you follow along as I continue to play this character through the game. I am currently level 31 right now. Um, and we are a little, little deep, I think, into the Batal part of the game. We've got our next set of gear upgraded, um, our magical bow upgraded. It's not the most amazing looking set of gear, but the bow is pretty sweet. Um, and the gear itself has great stats, even though it's not necessarily the best looking stuff. I'll, I'll be on the hunt out for more. But today we're going to be talking about what skills I have and how I use them, how I play this character, and my guide to playing the Magic Archer with your party. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video on my general archer, uh, the big thing to know is that my primary pawn is um, a uh, fighter. And uh, look at that armor set, because he's looking rather beefy. I uh, got a Beastrin fighter. I've left him as a fighter all the way through. I want sword and board. Um, he's currently using the best set of gear we found uh, as well in the game. Um, I've got his specialization set to, I forget what it's called, um, Logistician. And he's got a straightforward inclination. And these are the abilities that I have for him. You've got weapons skills. Uh, so you get burst strike, shield drum, cloudward slash, and shield pummel. The big thing is going to be um, shield drum because that's the one that uh, draws aggro from everybody. And of course, shield pummel, which is great. And then all the core skills onslaught, impale, defend, deflect, true deflect, tusk toss, steel foundation, enchanted counter, all those things. And of course, the augments that we're running. This is imperative because uh, more so than the archer, the magic archer needs to stay well away from combat. Like you need to stay back as far as possible because you are far more squishy than you were as just an archer. Because the gear set for the magic archer is more skewed towards having magical stuff as opposed to being purely defensive gear, or or even having slightly more defense. So you are more squishy and you do have to stay back. So you need to make sure that your pawn is capable of handling all the aggro or somebody in your party. So I have my main pawn set up as a tank which will help with the aggro so that you can play your magic archer to your heart's desire. Now, I've got mine specced this particular way, and I'm going to show you uh, these in combat as well. Um, but we are going with these skills right here. Frost Hunter Bolt, which um, basically freezes the target. It's pretty cool um, when it works. You know, it does lots of fun stuff, but... Uh, Freeze is the big thing. We got Candescent Orb, which is really awesome for darkness fights, because now you can light a target on fire and it stays lit while you're fighting it. Plus, it has a chance to proc fire on the mob, which is really, really cool. Um, I have Flame Fang Arrow. I currently only have the first tier of this. I'm waiting to level up my vocation a little bit more to get the next tier of it. But uh, you can either just short fire it or you can control the direction of it, which is great for surprising enemies. And I've you know, if there's a group of like five goblins, I've killed like four of them in one shot, leaving only one left. So it's pretty cool. And then life taking arrow or vim taking arrow, which essentially um, you fire it towards one of your companions and any targets that it finds along the way, it will ping off of, absorb their health and then deposit it into all the pawns along the way. So it's I'm not really the primary healer, but it's a nice thing to fire off once every few moments during a fight if you see that the health bars are dropping because it's an additional uh, heal for your party and that's never a bad thing to be able to bring a little bit of utility to the table. So that's essentially what the magic archer is. If I had to look at what the archer was, the archer was pure DPS. 100% your DPS, you are firing the arrows as quickly as possible to do as much damage as you possibly can especially when you get into like the explosive arrows and everything else this however the magic archer the way i'm playing my magic archer is as a utility dps class now obviously you can take whatever weapon skills you want there's um 
mind control ones, there's water ones, there's all these different abilities that you could take as a magic archer, but this is the way I've chosen to take mine, which is, this is my build guide, so we're going to go with it. Um, my core skills, I've got quick fire, conversion, pinpoint, volley, ribbit shot, climactic arrow, scopic sight, tracker sight, protracting arrow, and my augments that I'm currently running are avidity, um, sustainment, veracity, radiance, endurance, and prolificity. Um, and I will potentially take more of those. Um, so you can see here we've got all these other uh, abilities that we could uh, potentially use um, if we wanted to go back to the trainer and pick things, but um, uh, we're just using what we've got right now. Now, the tricky part to the Magic Archer is that there's essentially two ways of firing, and we're going over everything here in the tutorial system because before I actually go show you what it looks like in combat, it really helps to understand how this works. You have Pinpoint Volley, which creates a wide a circle that allows you to capture more targets and more points and then there's rivet shot which is far more focused so if you're trying to focus fire on like the head or the arm or something you would want to use rivet shot as opposed to pinpoint volley um, you've also got things like um, I got this one which is climactic arrow which as long as I do the timing right you do extra damage uh, scopic sight extends the lock-on range tracker sight includes the ma uh, increases the maximum number of lock-on targets and protracting arrow uh, allows you to, um, anytime you use fire, ice, or lightning as a weapon skill, your shots for a short time after that are immediately going to be the same type of damage. So this is a great way. And again, these are all these passive things that I've taken while uh, specking out this character um, so far. So those are the things I'm using to help extend my range, give me more lock-ons, and just generally do more DPS and be a better uh, utility character along the way. Now, what's a little confusing is how you fight, because there's two different types of combat, essentially, with the Magic Archer. One is the, I'm not going to aim at anything, and I'm just going to fire into the pack, and whatever is the closest target, I'm going to let my, my uh, arrows hit that. The easiest way to do that is if you're just holding... I'm using the play, PlayStation 5 so controller, so it's whatever it is for you on your chosen device. But holding down uh, the L button, the L1 button, gives me just the general abilities where I can just fire these. So um, I'm currently, you'll notice where it says on the right, it says I'm in rivet shot mode. So if I were to bring this up, I'm in rivet. If I switch to pinpoint, notice that circle is much bigger. Um, that allows me to do many more targets and and have a wider range if I'm looking to do AOEs. I traditionally like to keep it in um, uh, rivet shot, and you can hold the triangle. You just press triangle to do the conversion between those two. So there's two modes of fire you need to pay attention to before you go into combat. One is again just quick fire. So you hold down the L1 and you just fire. You hit square. It's going to be your um, frost bolt. Uh, X is going to be your flame bolt. And Y is my life-taking arrow, which does the heal. Those are the easy ones. There's no aiming necessary. It's just it's he's going to fire it in the direction that he's facing. And if he happens to have a target, he will then do damage against that target. That's the sort of the quick way to do things. Now, when you're actually in combat and you're wanting to use the lock-ons, you need to use the right bumper. So you'll bring this up and you will then move this around and target things as you will. I don't think the griffin's going to come into targeting range, but just in case we could keep an eye on this and see no nope, it's gonna stay out of range so we're gonna need to go something find something so that we can see what this looks like um, also it, when you're in this mode the you can actually do the flame fang arrow where you can control where it goes so once you loose it once you release the bumper it's going, going to give you this arrow it does have a limited range so it won't go forever so you do got to get it to where it needs to go and then boom it does a big explosion um, as opposed to when you just fire it from the hip with the left bumper and square, excuse me, um, where I have it set on the X. And again, you can put these wherever you want. These are just how I choose it. So see how it just, it's off on its own and it explodes at a distance? That's if you just fire it normally. So that's a quick rundown on how all of these abilities sort of work and how the combat for the Magic Archer works. But let's go find a combat scenario so that we can actually see this in action um, so that you guys can actually um, get a little bit of the glory of the this looks as if it will take us someplace further afield How magic archer at our discretion 
quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. All right, so ahead of me, you're going to see some of these beasties that are flying around. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. So if I want to get them from a distance with my arrow, I'm going to bring this up. We're going to fire it, and I'm going to loose this, and oh, I got it, and it's down. All right, now I can bring this up, and we're getting all the points on it. We're going to fire like that. Now if I want to do... Okay, now I'm just going to fire from the hip. And it's going to hit that one because I've already got it targeted, like so. We can get this one, use my health arrow. Okay, it's close to me. Alright, and that's down. If we mastered that attack... We would be invincible. We would be invincible. Oh, we should uh, loot up while we're here. And then we're going to go down the road and see if we can't find anything else to get in trouble with. And then I just want to show you off a little bit more, if we can, of the combat. And then we'll be able to call it a wrap. Now, there is a griffin. We'll never survive the griffin. Um, but we could head over here and see if there's any bad guys. I oh, there's there's like a golem over here. Let's try a big bad boss fight so you guys can get a chance to really see what the what the magic archer can do in a combat scenario. I'm assuming I need to hit those things in his back. Oh, he's uh, the hitbox. Did we just get wolf ads? Alright, finally took down the big bad boy. That took longer than I anticipated. But essentially... Considering the might of our combined experience, what other outcome would there be? That is the magic archer in a nutshell, everybody. And that was a big boy I haven't seen before. Dappled ore. Let's say I'd call that a success. Got everything we needed to. We can head back here, to Master. town now. Can we really afford to carry more? And uh yeah, I think that's a good uh it's a pretty good look at the Magic Archer as I'm playing it. Obviously, different people have different ways that they're going to play. The I prefer to focus on the utility and soon. DPS as opposed to purely yeah, going DPS. Do but you can choose to spec however ambush. you want because there's a lot of different ways to play this character. So hopefully you found this guide useful. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams happen here and on Twitch. There's a Patreon, there's a Discord, and I do a lot of different games. So make sure to check out all the other playlists. And I'll see everybody in the next one. Till then, stay safe. Happy gaming.